moving towards the next topic that is cazangeous vestibuloplasty so what do you mean by vestibuloplasty so it can also be called as ridge extension procedure so definition will be it is the procedure to increase the depth by uncovering the existing basal bone of the jaws surgically and by repositioning the mucosa muscle attachment to the lower position in mandible or the superior position in maxilla so in short it is the deepening of the vestibule without any bone addition so that is nothing but vestibuloplasty or it is also known as sulcoplasty or sulcus deepening so this is done when there is inadequate vestibular depth due to atrophy or high muscle or soft tissue attachment so as to increase the retention and stability of the denture and because of that we need to deepen the vestibule but now for this there should be sufficient amount of height of the alveolar bone that should be present if there is extreme resorption of the ridge so in that case you cannot go for vestibuloplasty now there are two types of vestibuloplasty that is mucosal advancement or secondary epithelialization so the topic that we are seeing cazangians is coming under the secondary epithelialization now this secondary epithelialization is when the mucosa of the vestibule it is used to line one side of the extended vestibule and the other side it heals by growing a new epithelial surface so it is indicated when there is sufficient bone but the mucosa it is insufficient in quantity or quality now starting with the cazangian's technique so it is the oldest technique that is in 1924 it was given so it is carried out in the premolar to the premolar region only in mandible now in this the periosteum it is left intact and it uses a mucosal flap from the inner aspect of the lower lip and in this the raw side of the lip it is left to heal by secondary intention now the disadvantages are there are higher chances of relapse there is severe scarring of the lip mucosa which is seen which decreases the flexibility of the lower lip and there is contracture which is seen now moving towards the last part that is the technique so first you are going to make an incision in the mucosa of the lower lip and a large flap it is retracted of the labial and the vestibular mucosa the next step will be now there will be sub mucosal dissection which is done from the inner aspect of the lower lip to the mucogingival junction and then the mentalis muscle it is detached from the periosteum to the required depth and the vestibule it is deepened by the supra periosteal dissection so here the periosteum it is remaining intact the next is now the flap that you have raised so what are you going to do with it so that flap of the mucosa it is turned downwards and you are going to place it against the periosteum and you are going to fix that flap with the sutures so that flap now it is turned downwards and by this you have deepened the vestibule and the last thing that you need to do is you can place a rubber catheter stent in the sulcus and you are going to secure that with the percutaneous sutures so that stent it will help to hold the flap in its new position and you are going to maintain that vestibule depth that you have attained so this catheter it is removed after 7 days and the labial side that is the lip side it is left to heal by secondary intention the problem is there are higher chances of contracture of the wound margin which takes place so that was all about it thank you so much